How's it going guys? It's Mac here from Cryptstar and I'm very, very excited. I worked a long, long time to go ahead and create this tutorial for you guys. And today I am proud to present the best way to go ahead and set up your M1 MacBook Pro top of the line, top spec for streaming as well as recording 4K on your local MacBook Pro. Now, the reason I went ahead and I went with the Mac spec was because I want to go ahead and keep a low profile on my desk. I want to be able to record on the go. I want to be able to go ahead and go around the world and do different things. And I only want to have one MacBook. And I want to also have a very, very low power consumption. So I actually save money and energy in the long run. So this setup actually takes away all of the hardware requirements for a a hardware based encoder you can just do everything from obs makes things very simple very smooth however these settings are not well known and it's very hard to go ahead and figure this out because there's not a lot of tutorials on the web for this in this video i'm going to walk you guys through both the container format all of like the inner settings that you need for obs to go ahead and set this up right now i'm actually recording and streaming at the same time on a private stream and i'm going to show you guys what that looks like here you guys can actually see dual me. I'm actually recording and s streaming at the same time. Now there is a slight audio delay and I'll show you guys how to make sure that you don't have that audio delay. It, it's pretty much a set number. I've, I've noticed this number works perfectly to go ahead and sync your audio and video. So that way when you're streaming or when you're recording, you never have that lag. This does depend on the camera that you're using. I'm using a Sony a6400 as well as the Elgato 4K cam link. And I have two of those. One is going to my PC for my game streaming and one is going to my camera for my web camera like you can see here. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and head into the settings here for the OBS and I'll show you guys some matrix looking stuff here. Woo! Look at that. All right. So you can see here I have my whole OBS setup. This is my personal setup. Okay. I'm not going to walk you guys through my scene setup. It's, it's quite complicated. So... I'm going to go ahead and just walk you guys first through the OBS settings. So what you want to do is you want to go over here to OBS and you can't quite see it on my screen, but if you go ahead and go up here, you can go to OBS. You'll see it on the top left hand corner, go to preferences and then your preferences will pop up here. First thing you want to do. And since I'm recording right now, this is kind of difficult to do, but you're going to go to video and you're going to go to the base canvas resolution. And I changed that to 4k. Because the base canvas resolution, when you're recording it normally, you want to use 4K. So make sure you just go ahead and change that aspect ratio to 16.9 and 4K, which is 3840 by 2160 pixels. Okay. Now, when you're streaming, you actually want to go ahead and use this output scaled resolution to 2560 by 14440. Okay. And use the downscale filter of bicubic sharpening scaling 16 samples. There's another setting on the very bottom that has like, I think 32 samples. It's like Lysenol or something like that. But I wouldn't use that just because it doesn't uh, work very well when I'm streaming. So I just use this one. It works fine. Okay. And also you want to make sure you use the common FPS values of 30, especially if you're just doing normal YouTube content creation. I wouldn't worry so much about high FPS, even for gaming. That's actually mostly for when you're shooting personally. So when people are watching, I don't think FPS is a super big factor because your, your human eye can't catch up to it anyways. It's mostly for when you need millisecond reaction time when you're playing video games. And I believe that the cam link also has an input limitation of it. Uh, what do you call it? 30 FPS when you're going ahead and taking it from your camera to the computer itself. And when you do this, also make sure that you use a direct connection using the CamLink Pro. Do not use a hub in the middle. You need to connect directly the CamLink 4K to your computer directly. I use a little USB dongle. It's about this long. I'm not going to take it off right now because I'm using it, but it's about this long. You can buy it on Amazon for about $6. Okay, so these are the, the settings you want for right now. This is for live streaming when you're recording locally, which I'm actually doing right now, but I'm also live streaming, which is pretty amazing. You can do both at once with the quality that I have going on right now. You want to change the output to actually the same as this canvas resolution, and then you'll actually be saving it as a 4K video. Now comes the next part, which is very, very important. You want to head over to output and Let's go ahead and go over the streaming settings first. 
Here, you want to go ahead and make sure you use the encoder, the Apple VTH264 hardware encoder. Now, sometimes this doesn't show up if you have an M1 Mac. You need to go ahead and just Google. I'll leave, well, I'll leave a link in the description if you need help and this doesn't show up. Updating your OBS should make this show up, but sometimes there is an error and then you have to go ahead and install something via the command line or you can just reinstall OBS and it should show up properly. Now from here, for me, I have to press this little rescale output. I'm not sure why you shouldn't have to, but I rescale the output to 2K uh, when I'm streaming. So 2560X1440 and that makes sure that it actually uploads to 4K. And you can see here in the background, my video is actually at 4K right now, or sorry, 2K. You can see 1440p, which is 2K, okay? So you need to make sure you change that setting. For me, that's the only way I could get it to work. Now, also what you should do is go ahead and head over to uh, the bitrate. And for me, the perfect bitrate was right about 14,000 kilobits per second. I really tried to do 4K resolution and 4K works well. Uh, it works okay, but you're gonna have some stuttering on the and buffering on the client end. So when people are watching, there's a possibility that there's an audio lag or a video lag for your end viewer. So I would go ahead and just do 2K instead of 4K. It's very difficult to get 4K to work properly. I have gotten to work fine in the past, but it's not extremely reliable, especially when you have other applications running on your MacBook. Now, this streaming, everything I'm talking about right now is basically assuming that you're not running Final Cut Pro or any other hardware intensive applications on your MacBook at the time. So when you're streaming, make sure you close all applications. The only application I have running right now, I think is Discord and OBS as well as Brave Browser. So just make sure that you don't have a whole bunch of applications open because this won't work uh, if you have a lot of applications open because it, it is just a laptop. It's not a really great GPU. It is amazing GPU for the price, for the power consumption, but it is still just a laptop. Remember that this is not a GTX 3090 uh, video card, okay? Now, let's head over to here, keyframe interval, and I press change that to two. Uh, I used auto and that seems to have some stuttering, okay? So just make sure that when you go ahead and set up your keyframe interval, I'll set it to two, it seems to work the best, and set the profile to high. This makes sure that your, your stream looks as nice as possible. Now from there, let's go ahead and go into the recording settings. From here, this part is very, very important uh, for recording. Again, I go ahead and I change the recording settings to uh, custom output FFmpeg, okay? You can go ahead and do the simple output, but it doesn't work quite as well. There's a lot of fine tuning you should do in order to make sure that you can get the best possible output for your video. From here, you wanna go ahead and change the container format to Matroska, that is MKV format. There are some other uh, MKV formats which uh, are here, but I prefer to use this Matroska one. This is the basic one. In the simple settings, this is actually MKV. In the advanced settings, it says Matroska, okay? And Muxer settings, I don't think you need to actually do any Muxer settings in here. Now for the video bitrate, I use uh, 10,000 kilobits per second. This seems to work very well for 4K output, okay? And you don't need to rescale the output for this as well. It works fine without rescaling, especially if you change the video to the 3840 by 2160. Now, let's head down to the video encoder and the audio encoder. This part is very, very important because when you're using Final Cut Pro, uh, you wanna make sure it works very seamlessly and you can just go ahead and import into Final Cut Pro very easily. So what I do is I use the video encoder H.264. This will increase the stability of your video when recording so there's no stuttering and that it looks really nice. And it makes sure that you're using the hardware encoder rather than the software encoder. So H.264 video toolbox is the recommendation for this, okay? Anything else will not work very well, okay? I used, I tried this HVAC C video toolbox. This didn't work. I think this is just audio. So just make sure you use the H.264 video encoder. Now for the video encoder settings, uh, you don't need anything for that. For the audio bitrate, use 320 kilobits per second. This seems to work very well. I use two audio tracks, one for my desktop and one for my, uh, for my audio here, my Shure microphone. And my audio codec, I use AAC, which is the default, but actually sometimes it sets it to a default of something else uh, that didn't work at all with my 
Final Cut Pro and I had to like export the video and it was kind of a pain in the butt. So I recommend just making sure you set this to AAC to begin with and that works fine with Final Cut Pro. Now, all these settings are basically based on if you're going to be making videos for you know, YouTube, you're just going to be making tutorials. You're just going to be making simple explanatory videos. Uh, for me, I do cryptocurrency and I do other sort of tutorials using browsers and using command line. So these settings work very well for me. I can have very high quality video, 4K video output, and I don't have to have any worry about any audio issues. There is one more setting that is very, very important to make sure you don't have any audio latency. Now check that out. We're in the matrix. Woo. <laughs> I love that. Anyways, you want to make sure you go to here. Uh, you want to right click on your microphone, advanced audio properties. And it seems like the seat sweet spot for the sync offset is 320 milliseconds. If you're using the CamLink 4K, which I highly recommend. I'll go ahead and leave a link for the CamLink in the description. It works really well. If you want to have 4K everything, it seems to work amazingly. Also, it works very well for 2K streaming and 4K streaming. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to go back. You can do 4K streaming. Uh, it is possible. Just make sure you have no other applications open. You basically have one or two browser tabs open and you're not doing any, any hardware intensive uh, work at the time. Make sure, of course, Final Cut Pro is closed. Then you can change the output scaled resolution to 3840 by 2160. The only issue I have when I'm streaming in 4K is that sometimes the rescale doesn't show up in my YouTube stream itself. So make sure you go to rescale output and make sure that is also set to 3840 by uh, 2160. And then hopefully it should show uh, the proper output in the YouTube streaming. And by the way, I'm talking about that again is you go back to YouTube and you can check here and you can see your video streaming quality as a 4K. It'll say 3840 or whatever by uh, whatever 2160. Okay, right now I'm set to this and it seems to work flawlessly. You can see it's very, very beautiful uh, streaming quality. And that means I don't have to have any external hardware, any external encoder. It actually saves me about a thousand dollars and it probably saves me a lot of money on electricity every month because the M1 MacBook Pro is very, very low energy cost. Okay, so this is actually gonna save me a lot of money in the long run when it comes to energy costs as well. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this helped you guys out. If you like this video, of course, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up and leave a comment. Let me know if there's any other settings that I missed. I don't know if I did everything correctly. It seems to work very well for my setup and I hope it works well for your setup. Anyways, I hope this helped you guys out, and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Peace out, everybody.